How did I go from being a stereotypical engineer, afraid of making phone calls, to a very socially calibrated technical professional? Well, it certainly wasn't by accident. Using a combination of emotional and social intelligence, or EQ and SQ, I've been able to become an incredibly competent technical professional over the last 12 years in the working world. Pretty early on in my working career, I had a bit of an inflection point where I heard about someone who passed away in the office. So not still working, but actually at work. And this is a very sad story, and it brought a lot of pause to me because I was thinking, oh, I made it. I did what society told me. I went and got a degree. I got a job. I'm, I'm good. I made it. And I was starting to kind of see the writing on the wall when I heard about this guy passing away, and I was like, wow, this guy didn't even retire. He's still working. He's literally at the office. This is crazy. Is this it? Wow. It was at that moment that I realized there was nobody coming to save me. And that was simultaneously the scariest and most freeing moment. It's quite similar to where you realize that nobody really cares about you. Your family cares about you more than everyone else does, but in the general population, nobody really cares. And that again is simultaneously very freeing and feels very constraining. I took the no one's coming mentality upon myself to go and grow my emotional and social intelligence. How did I do this? And what did it look like? Well, I went from not really knowing how to socialize, being pretty weird, you know, kind of like, you know, holding eye contact too long, not really knowing what to say, you know, I didn't feel good enough to talk to people, all the way through to now I can talk to anyone. I've been living abroad for several years, and I actually prefer talking to strangers every day. So I've gone from an engineer to an extrovert. So I used to be very introverted, and now I'm more of an extrovert, maybe an ambivert, if I'm being totally honest, but closer to extroversion. And this was something that I did over a series of years intentionally because I wanted to get to a position now where I am not only allowed out of the lab, I'm actually getting to talk to external customers, which is great. And that's something that many people at my engineering level don't normally get to do. So I have some great opportunities that I've been able to find through using my newfound emotional and social intelligence that have led me to some really great career prospects, as well as growing a professional network that now spans two continents, and the motivation to continue down this path. When I first had this inflection, I started growing my professional social network by really learning how to actively listen to others. I was really trying to understand what people around me were trying to say and why they were trying to say it. This was something that really helped me kind of understand motivations of the people within my group. There were some people that were ready to retire, so learning how to talk to people was something that I did at work as well as outside of work. So outside of work, you have a little bit more forgiveness when you say things that are wrong. So maybe, you know, at somewhere social, you have rock climbing gym, something like that, where there's low social pressure, where you can go talk to new people. And if you say something a bit weird, as long as it's not a super small place, that'll probably be forgiven. And obviously I'm not trying to say you should go out and say crazy stuff when you go try to learn how to socialize. That's not what I'm trying to get across here. I'm trying to say, Perhaps when you're trying to push your boundaries a little bit, go to some place where your employment is not going to be affected if you say the wrong thing at the wrong time. One of the differences between athletes and corporate professionals like engineers is that athletes have a huge amount of practice and very little game time, typically. Whereas corporate professionals, it's all game time. There's basically no practice. So everything is on, you're always on, always on, always under the microscope. So if I was talking to someone younger than me who wanted to go learn and take a path similar to mine, you should probably look outside of work for some of those initial socializing opportunities. Maybe look at something like Toastmasters and start to grow your social skills, your communication skills, your emotional intelligence. So you're gonna start having more self-awareness, learning how to regulate your emotions better. And then you can get into empathizing with others, and having motivation long-term. There's the four steps in emotional intelligence. And after you have those, you can start working on social intelligence, which is having social awareness and then social facilities. So social awareness is how much you can understand about the social situations that you're in, and social facilities is how well you can facilitate getting things done in that social situation. So there's a lot of steps here, and they don't have to be done strictly in order. Obviously, self-awareness and self-regulation need to be done in that order because you can't regulate what you're unaware of, but the rest of them can be done rather interchangeably. And I'd recommend, when you're starting this journey, to just start. You just need to start getting some reps in and then as you get the reps in, you can start iterating. With engineers, 
That's usually all it takes. Get some reps in, start iterating, see what's working, see what's not working, and try to treat it as a complex machine. And don't be afraid when people call these skills soft skills. I'm not a big fan of calling them soft skills because I think it devalues them a little bit. But regardless, emotional and social intelligence are incredibly important. And if you're in engineering, the bar is so low for you to have these skills because everyone expects you to have no skills. And I'm not gonna lie, one of my favorite things these days is when I meet some random stranger and I talk to them for an hour or two, like I'm sitting at the airport and I'm a captive audience. And after an hour or two, I tell them I'm an engineer and they say, I never would have guessed. That is something that gives me great pride. And it's something even a dozen years ago, I would have never thought to have been possible. Emotional and social intelligence have allowed me to get my career to a place I never would have expected very quickly. You should start working on your emotional intelligence right now. I trust you've been paying attention to this emotional intelligence video thus far. I want to help you pay even better attention to your emotional and social intelligence by clicking the link below this video and scheduling a free call with me. On the call, we'll come up with a personalized plan for you to start getting bigger raises, faster promotions, and stronger relationships with everyone around you. Don't delay. Click that link below and schedule a call with me today.